gotten more and more hardline over the course of many, many years and literally even gained prominence as a consequence of American destabilization. Wider conflict, but four rounds of attacks, General, isn't it already a wider conflict? It already is a, a, a wider, if you will, but a round of conflict. But um, you, we can see that the U.S. and the Allied um, targeteers assisting them have been careful and measured in what they hit. They're still going in after installations. Mm -hmm. They're going after the anti-ship missile launching sites and drone locations. So it's been measured in that way. Yet the Houthis go out. They've hit a couple of container ships recently, including a U.S. flag one. And I worry that one, that a lot of and you have a lot of stuff flying in the air. Uh, something eventually hits. And what happens when one of those missiles hits a Euro U.S. or coalition um, ship or entity or base and people are killed? What does this have to do with the Houthis? Um, well, they're saying that, like, the region is already uh, a, a powder keg. Killed in this level of tension all around that I've described in the whole uh, Middle East and, uh, and now Central Asia. It sounds like you're saying the U.S. attacks so far have not been much of a deterrent on the Houthis. Yeah, except uh, here, we got to cover this. This is like uh, an incredible, incredible addition. And perhaps a perfect distillation, most concise summary of U.S. foreign policy available out there. A reporter asked Brandon, are the airstrikes against the Houthis working? Here's Brandon's answer. Well, when you say working, are they stopping the Houthis? No. Are they going to continue? Yes. It's awesome. I mean, that's like, that's the most Trumpian take you could arrive at. Now, liberals hate the orange man. Liberals hate the orange man. Orange man bad, we all say. This is such an orange man answer. At least he isn't balding. What did he say? He responded to the question, are the airstrikes against the Houthis working? He said, well, when you say working, are they stopping the Houthis? No. Are they going to continue? Yes. I want to know. I want to know where the liberals are. The the champion uh, Brandon support squad. What did they have to say about this? I mean, I've again, another <clears throat> libs are going to hate you for pointing this out. I, it sucks because. They're not working because Twitch streamer Hassan Piker is interviewing their most loyal soldiers and baby girling them. Yeah, that's why they're not working. Now, I've been saying this since day one. Day one, I've been saying that if your goal is to like destabilize uh, the Ansar Allah administration, that's going to fail. If your goal is to uh, get them to stop trying to intercept uh, commercial vessels, and make it so that it is uh, difficult to traverse the Red Sea, an important choke point for commerce, that is also failing seemingly. And people have been very upset about me pointing this out. So what is the real reason to keep bombing Yemen? What's the real reason why you're just doing it? Spread the fun around? We got too much, we got too many bombs we gotta get rid of? Is that what it is? Maybe take the attention away? Take the heat away from Israel? I don't know. U.S. has to get rid of the Iran regime. I like this. I like this idea that like the United States has to get rid of the Iranian regime, a, a regime that has only, in a way that is not dissimilar to Yemen, gotten more and more hardline over the course of many, many years, and literally even gained prominence as a consequence of American destabilization. At what point do we look at America's foreign policy and go, "Hey"? This is kind of crazy. Maybe we should stop trying to deal with the problem militarily because it has only been a demonstrable failure. Now, of course, it's not a demonstrable failure. It actually has been a success if you think about it from the perspective of the military industrial complex. From that position, Yes, as long as there's like pot shots and, and back and forth fighting and that constitutes an endless need for more military gear, more weapons, more bombs and the like and more R&D, okay, then 
then yes, it has been a tremendous success. Okay. The problem is, ain't nobody's making money in the in the uh, soft power diplomatic industrial complex. Okay, that's the issue. <clears throat> Learning about the coup in Iran in 1953 done by United States and UK is very important in understanding why Iran despises the Western countries so much. United Kingdom controlled Iran's oil for decades through the Anglo-Iranian oil company. In around 1950, Iranian government accused the company of violating concession terms and interfering in the internal affairs of the country. After negotiations failed between Iranian government and Anglo-Persian oil company, the Iranian government and the very popular democratically elected leader Mohammad Mossadegh voted to nationalize this company. Then British intelligence contacted United States for help and both of them launched a coup and turned Iran into a monarchy by replacing the Prime Minister with Mohammad Reza Pahlavi. United States agreed to help Britain because at that time Iran had one of the largest oil reserves and they did not want Iran to get into Soviet influence. According to Frontline, UK took Iran to the International Court of Justice alleging that Iran broke contractual agreements. The very popular PM of Iran travelled to The Hague and delivered his speech exposing the systematic looting of Iranian oil assets and how UK meddled in Iran's internal affairs for a century and a half before that. The court ruled in Iran's favour by expressing that it did not have the required jurisdiction. This was one of the reasons why Shah was overthrown in 1979 by a very conservative and a very anti-Western leader Ayatollah Khomeini. The biggest threat to the US is the US regime. The biggest threat to the US is the US regime. Oh, 100%. There is not a single place that has gotten better off as a consequence of American bombs and American intervention. Okay? Where are things that this guy is responsible for this regime? I listen. American intervention historically in the MENA region, especially so, but definitely globally, has almost always created way more reactionary hardliners. Hardline reactionary fascists that we have installed that champion neoliberalism like Pinochet or hardliner reactionaries that, you know, run on the anti-Western position and secure power by positioning themselves as the opposite, like as, as securing themselves as the anti-Western, anti-American leaders. And then instead of trying to correct course and normalize relations with said countries and try to have a, a infinitely better relationship. And I think a good example of this would be like, to a certain degree, because of the economic interest there, China, okay, you end up pushing them further and further away, and they keep trying to dominate the region. The world would be like Wild West without American intervention. Yeah, definitely. Because currently, the world is not Wild West. The world is already Wild West. It's just you live in America, so you don't see it. And when you do see it, and when I do talk to someone who's living in the Wild West, most people go, dude, what are you talking about? That guy's a terrorist that deserves to be perished uh, immediately by a laser-guided munition system. What are you doing? It's so funny that in many ways, also, by the way, yeah, I wonder where the Wild West is from. <laughs> in many ways, exactly the same principles that apply in Gaza with Hamas is happening in a much broader scale globally or in every other country. Israel's actions upon the Palestinian population is, you know, the American playbook globally. It's obviously a lot more involved than the American playbook globally because the Americans already did their settler colonialism and successfully carried out an indigenous genocide. So the rest of the places where we engage in colonial actions are oftentimes just simply occupation or, or, you know, continued efforts to destabilize and the like. I don't know how else to describe the situation and how it is unfolding in the Middle East. 
beyond it is a demonstrable failure of epic proportions, but it's also, you know, regular old business.